I am so happy to be here with all of you today to discuss this topic of living with COPD during COVID-19. It really is a stressful time to be living with a chronic condition like COPD during an outbreak like this. And I think that we have seen evidence of this over the last few months as we have had many questions about how do you know if you're sick with COVID or maybe you're having a COPD flare up. And, you know, I just, um, we want to offer these webinars to you as a way to reassure you and give you information that can equip you to make good decisions about your day-to-day -day life. Um, I think there are a lot of you who are with us today or watching the recording. You're taking, you know, the, the necessary precautions. You're staying home, practicing physical distancing, washing your hands for 20 seconds, wearing masks when you must go out. And there are others of you who are still required to go to work. You're providing some essential service and are exposed to the public a bit more than you would like to be. So you're kind of shifting gears a little bit um, from the first half of the, the webinar. Uh, we wanted to talk about a topic that has been coming up a lot in email questions. And I think you may have seen um, Jamie skipped a few slides for me here. We're going to come back, circle back later on another webinar or maybe another type of event and talk about the action plan that um, those were the slides that we just skipped. So we're going to talk about some of these questions that have come up on COPD 360 social and other places. And it's face masks. This has been a really hot topic. So first of all, why is wearing a face mask important? Well, simply because scientific models suggest that up to 80% of transmission comes from asymptomatic carriers of the virus. So when I say asymptomatic, that means people who don't have symptoms, they don't feel sick, they don't look sick, they don't know that they're spreading a, a, a very serious illness. So this spread of the infection happens not only when people cough, but anytime the droplets are released, as we've heard, you know, with Dr. Hahn and, and Dr. Hamashaw, when they talk about the, the viral particles being on droplets and that kind of thing. So those particles can be released Yes, when you're coughing, but it can also be released when sneezing or coughing or laughing or singing. Anything that you would, um, anytime you might be in close contact with someone that's doing any of those things, you would want to have a barrier between you and them. So it makes sense that we want people to wear masks to prevent the spread of droplets during those times. So make no mistake, <laughs> I'm not trying to, to say that wearing a mask is easy because it is not. Wearing a mask can be really difficult. We have listed some of the reported reasons why people don't like to wear masks here. And you can see them, you know, I get short of breath, my anxiety increases, I have this sensation of suffocating. In fact, yesterday, um, the British Lung Foundation just posted some comments on their Facebook page that speaks to the difficulty that people with respiratory problems can have when wearing a mask. And so with that in mind, um, we'd like to be uh, helpful for you. And so we wanted to talk about different types of masks and face covering. Um, so before we get too far into this discussion, I want to emphasize that you should wear the mask or face covering that is right for you. If it's uncomfortable or it doesn't fit properly, you will likely end up not wearing it or not going places you need to go, or you'll find yourself touching your face to provide relief, um, which is definitely something you shouldn't do. The N95 masks that we've all heard so much about are what we recommend for healthcare professionals, ones that are doing direct patient care in those situations where they're dealing with COVID or, uh, or suspected COVID patients. They are really not recommended for people with breathing problems because they do fit very tight to the face and don't allow for much air movement. And that's kind of the point, right? You don't want air to be moving in around the edges of the mask because you may be inhaling the particles that have the virus uh, attached to them. So, there are other options that we can explore and find one that hopefully works for you. So let's look at a few examples. These are being modeled by some of our COPD 360 social community members. Uh, the first one up in the top left-hand corner is a surgical mask. So as you can see here, it fits snugly over the bridge of the nose, and it comes down below the chin, and it's a little loose on the side. And it could be worn over a nasal cannula if care is taken when it when putting it on or taking it off with the mask ear loops. These can be hard to find though because they are being used also by healthcare professionals. Um, the middle picture, the more vertical picture, is what you see here is Bill 66 showing us another version of a surgical mask. This one is a little thicker than a normal mask and his even has a protective film on the inside of the mask as a barrier 
So you can see that it fits a little tighter around the edges of the face and provides a little better protection because of the way it fits and because of the thickness of the material used. So what he, what he said to me though was it can still be difficult to breathe through it. And he does report that he gets headaches and experiences some shortness of breath when wearing this for long periods of time, which he has to do when he's at work. So this may not be a good option for everyone. So let's look at the bottom left hand corner and we can see an image of a homemade face mask. You see this mask covers the nose and comes down well below the chin and has a little bit of a gap to help with that um, smothering or suffocating feeling that tight masks can produce. So if you're considering making a mask or buying a homemade mask from someone else, make sure that it follows the guidance given by the CDC. It needs to have at least two layers of tightly woven fabric, and it should fit over the nose and below the chin. Some people are even um, making their mask with a little pocket in between the two layers, so you can put a coffee filter, paper towel, or maybe even a Kleenex in that pocket for extra layer of protection. If you also look closely at this picture, you can see that our model has added a little hook made from a vinyl covered paper clip to her mask, so it hooks onto her glasses to keep it from slipping off. This keeps her from touching her face, which is important, even while wearing a mask. So then looking on the right side of the screen, you can see the face covering section. These are made from a scarf to top right-hand side. Bottom right-hand side is from a bandana. And if you're having trouble with claustrophobia or anxiety or shortness of breath while wearing the more traditional style mask, these might be good for you to try. They don't fit too snugly to the face, and they do allow a little air to come in at the bottom opening. The top right photo is done with a large scarf that starts out being placed over the bridge of the nose, and then she wrapped it around the back of the head, and then the ends were brought back around to the front and tied up under the chin. Notice here that there are also a series of clips that um, she uses to secure them to her glasses so she doesn't have to reach up and adjust the mask just to keep it in place. And the bottom right picture is simply a bandana folded double and tied at the back of the head. The only place it sits firmly is over the nose and ears, so air is able to enter the bottom opening and can help with that suffocating feeling. Again, find the mask that fits and feels good to you. Um, some protection is definitely better than no protection. So on the next slide, we're gonna look at some things you need to know about wearing a mask safely. Number one, your mask should fit across the bridge of the nose. Um, it needs to be secure so it doesn't slip and so you don't feel the need to readjust it. Number two, cloth masks should be two layers thick. Again, tightly woven material is recommended. Um, even two layers of t-shirt material is good for mask making. Um, it's, it's flexible, it's comfortable. Um, that is tightly, um, tightly knit enough that it should keep out um, a good deal of, of particles. Um, the fabric should be natural fibers. They're easier to breathe through and they carry moisture away from you. And trust me, because I've, I've been in healthcare a long time, I've worn a lot of masks, you will have moisture in your mask. Um, you'll get hot, um, you'll sweat a little, the moisture created just as you breathe in and out. Um, you'll be surprised at how much moisture there is underneath your mask. So make sure you get a, a good breathable fabric. Number three, wash your hands before putting your mask on. Good hand washing is crucial at all points in dealing with the spread of this virus. But before you put your hands near your face, please make sure that you wash your hands thoroughly. Uh, number four, refrain from touching your face, adjusting your mask. So anytime you touch your face, you're risking the spread of illness. Not just COVID, by the way, but other bacteria and viruses that are also still out there that we just aren't talking about as much right now. So keep your hands away from your face. Number five, remove your mask by touching only the ear loops. So when you're taking your mask off, you only wanna reach back behind your ears and take the ear loops off from around each ear. Like if I've been to the grocery store, I will use hand sanitizer in the car before I take my mask off. Um, if, I, if it's possible, at least use a sanitizer before bringing your hands close to your face to grab the ear loops. But, um, do not touch the face covering portion of the mask at all. Number six, wash your hands after removing your mask. 
please make sure you're washing your hands for 20 seconds after you remove your mask or use sanitizer if you're in your car. Wash your hands as soon as you get home. And um, just another tip, I also keep a canister of cleaning wipes in the garage so I can wipe down my steering wheel, the gear shifter, turn signals, handles, you know, et cetera, when I get home. That way I know everything is clean for my next trip out. Number seven, wash and dry your cloth mask after each use. So put the used mask right in the washer after you take it off. Um, it's good to have several masks for this reason so that you always have one that's clean and ready to use. And number eight, for multi-use masks, store them in a paper bag in a warm place. If you have a mask similar to an N95, place it in a paper bag, leave it in a warm place. The typical coronavirus doesn't tolerate heat very well, so there's some indication that this practice can help reduce the amount of virus, not eliminate, but reduce the amount of virus on the mask surface. Um, remember, please, that physical distancing is still the best policy, but if you have to go out, please wear a mask and wash your hands frequently.